In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to pull a URL parameter out of a URL and input it automatically into a contact form 7 input field. Now getting the parameter into the URL is something you have to figure out for yourself, as in you have to figure out where that parameter is coming from. I show you how to pull it from the URL, but you might add that to a link, you might get that from an autoresponder, you might have, there's all kinds of ways you can generate the parameter in the URL, but once it's in there, you're going to be able to input that automatically into an input field in contact form 7. I'm, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to give you the JavaScript you need. It's on the blog. You can just copy and paste it right into your site. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress tips and tricks and getting better at it and serving your clients better, then start now by clicking subscribe, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything, and make sure you sign up for the private WP Learning Lab Facebook group where we can hang out, ask questions, help each other get better at WordPress. There's a link in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. To be able to pull information from your URL and the form of URL parameters into input fields on your form, you need two things. You need a form and you need the code on this blog page. I've linked to it in the card above and the description down below. Now it says here this is for contact form 7, but in all honesty, this works for any form. As long as there is an input field and you're able to add an ID to the input field, you can make this process work for any form. If we scroll to the bottom of this page, we see the code right down here that we're going to use. We need to define or customize three things in this code, the variable, the parameter, and the input field ID which I'm going to show you how to do in this tutorial. We're going to do it right now, actually. I'm going to double click into this field. I'm going to select all of the code and copy it. Go back to our site. I'm going to do this the quick and dirty way. I'm going to put the JavaScript code right into the page where the form exists, right in the WordPress editor. A better way to do it is through the functions file. I've linked to the tutorial above that shows you how to add JavaScript code to the functions file and have it displayed on WordPress pages and the head of the pages. And that tutorial also shows you how to define the code appearing only on specific pages so you can have it appear just on pages where your form exists because you don't need it appearing on every single page on your site. So I'm going to find a page that has a form and I'm going to hold down control and click on both edit and view so we can have the editor loaded and take a look at the live form to see that no fields are currently being pre-filled. So here's our live form. None of the fields are pre-filled. They're all blank just like a regular default form. Now we're going to go back to our editor, paste our code in here. And again, if you want to do this a little bit better, do it through the functions file. I'm just doing quick and dirty for the purposes of this tutorial. Other tutorial for the functions file is in the description down below, so check that out if you want to. A couple of things we have to customize. We have to create a variable. We have to create a parameter in the URL, or you possibly already have one, and an input field ID. So the first thing we want to do is understand what parameters are in URLs. The URL for this form looks like this. A parameter is something you see up here after a question mark. Then you have a parameter name like f name, for example, short for first name, equals bill. So here we have a parameter value pair. f name is a parameter. Bill is the value. And the script is going to take the value from the parameter and fill it into an appropriate box. So we're going to take this parameter name, I'm going to copy it. If you already have URLs that are constructed this way, take the parameters that you're trying to target from that URL. If you are going to be creating your own URLs, then you can create whatever you want and just make sure that parameter value is in here where I have capitalized parameter. Make sure the single quotes stay in place. Do not delete those. Create a variable. This is something just for the internal usage of the script. I'm going to call it first name. I'm going to copy that variable. I'm going to replace this capitalized variable over here. And now we just need to have an ID for the input field. Now by default, contact form 7 forms do not have IDs for these fields, but you're able to add one to any field that you want. So if we go into the form builder, I'm going to find this form. The form ID is 1058. And here it is, the ID of 1058. So I'm going to edit the basic form. And you can add an ID to any existing field by just clicking into the short code, typing ID, colon, and then the, the name of the ID. So I'm just going to call this your first name. 
just to keep it different from the other ones we used in the, in the script. If you want to add a new field and add an ID to it, just click anywhere in the form builder. Click on any of these options you want to create. I'm going to use this text. And the ID attribute is listed in this box right here. So you could just put the ID in here, your first name, insert tag, and then we have the ID in the short code already. And it looks much the same as this one. I'm just going to delete this one here, save this form. And you're going to have to add the ID to every field that you want to pre-fill with this script. I'm going to add the ID into here, your first name, update. And now if everything went well, we should be able to come out here in just a second and start working with form prefilling. And I'm just going to refresh this page with this parameter up here. And we're going to see that the name Bill, or hopefully we're going to see the name Bill prefilled right here. And there it is. Now if this is Jane, it's going to prefill Jane when it reloads the page. So the script is pulling the value from this parameter and putting it into the field like so. And you can do this for as many fields as you want. All you do is you come back into the editor, you extend the script. If you have other parameters, just copy this. And then paste it. Call this, let's see what we have out here. Let's call this email. Is the variable, just so they're different, I'm going to call it your email. Parameter is going to be email. And let's copy this document right again. Paste that. Get element by ID. We're going to call the ID your best email, which we still have to add to the form. And the value is the variable. So that's this one right here, your email. Paste it in there. Go back to our form editor. Add an ID of your best email, which is this ID that we have here. Click on update. Then we come out to here. We add a parameter by adding an ampersand signed email equals, and then the email is going to say test at test.com. Hit enter to load this page again, and it's going to pre fill that email address right into that box. And that is how we're able to pre fill information. And again, this works for any form that has an input field. If you want to test things, if you work on a live site, for example, you want to test things before you actually put them live on the, on the form, what you can do is let's just comment out these two lines. And let's add console.log. Let's add that two times. And we just put these, sorry, these variables right into here. And now the pre-filling of the form is going to be disabled because I use these forward slashes to comment out the writing of the values into the fields. But we're going to be able to see the values that are being created in our console. So if I come out here and I open the inspector, we have a console tab right here. If I refresh this page with the console tab open, we see we have Jane and test at test.com. Those are the two values that we have on our variables. If I change this to Frank, we're going to have now Frank and test at test.com. And nobody can see this unless they're opening the console. Visitors are opening the console on your website as you're testing this, which is highly unlikely. So nobody can see this. You can test that the variables are being pulled. And then when you're ready, you can just uncomment the actual code that writes the material, or writes the values into the input fields and then your form is active and pre-filling. So that's how we do it. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the private Facebook group and the link in the description down below. And next up, check out one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.